Welcome to Back Alley Bonsai. Um, today I'm going to be uh, doing a, a couple of interesting things. There's some uh, cool uh, uh, salvage plants, I guess you can call them, uh, urban wild collected plants uh, that I'm going to be working on. They are these elms that I have in this pool of water. Um, I want to also give you guys a quick uh, update. Oop, here's terrible camera work. Uh, this is my elm. This is actually the, genetically the same tree uh, that I did a while back with the root cuttings. And you can see, hopefully, down in there, lots of nice little roots in there. All of it very nice. Happy about that. So that was a success. So what I'm going to be working on uh, in the next couple of videos, I may do this over two videos or three, uh, is these trees that are in this tub of water right here. These are, again, all from the same uh, tree. I think they're all actually the same elm tree. Um, these are from a construction site nearby. Uh, they had basically been clean cut. You can see where this one's been chopped off. This one's also been manipulated through a cyclone fence and basically flat cut. They tried to flat cut it a couple of times. Um, this had been flat cut. Um, and uh, this is basically what was sort of struggling to come back. And you can start to see some little root buds forming in here. They're trying to, there are root buds forming in here. You can see that it's trying to, trying to bounce back. It's doing what it can with what it's got. Elms are really resilient. Um, and you really gotta, gotta work at it to, to do in an elm. Um, they, will, they will throw out roots like crazy. So I wanna give you guys kind of a look at each of these ones. Uh, I've got this one here. Which is this very long spindly tree but it looks really healthy like good good green growth on it and pretty decent little roots so i think it's going to be going to be okay so there, there's that one and then there's this long one uh it's got kind of a cool bend in it i may not wind up keeping all of it but you know you can see where it was kind of laying in the dirt for a while as it was growing back up again. Uh, this is basically just one long root. Um, and it's probably two inches in diameter or something like that. Uh, it is it is really impressive. Um, and then this, I actually had to kind of excavate this out of the uh, uh, out of the yard. It was growing slightly underneath a dirt embankment. You can see right here on the edge where it was right up against the sidewalk. Um, and I just kind of flat cut the bottom, saved as much root as I can. And again, it's still trying, you know, it, uh, all these were, were collected a couple days ago. So I'm going to move, whoops, blip, blip, blip. Stay up guy. Uh, so I'm going to get these on the bench and try and get them potted up and I'll be back in just a moment. All right. So I've got the elm tree on the bench and my objective here is to get this kind of these roots kind of cleaned up a little bit and actually fit this thing into this terracotta pot that it is sitting on top of. And it also has a lot of nice little root buds that it's trying to form. It's got these nice little white speckles, but it's, you know, it didn't have a, an easy go of it as I was clipping it out of the ground. So I want to clean a lot of this up. It's tried to callus over quite a bit. Um, but unfortunately it's been sitting in water and so it's mostly just become kind of a gummy mess because uh, it has it has bled a little bit um, but that's that's okay I don't think it's gonna do it too much harm I think actually everything's gonna be pretty much okay with it um, I may actually be able to get a couple of extra little trees out of this one as well so I'm gonna give that a try um, so like for example this branch right here uh, which is Got a little bit of growth on it right there. You can see a couple of little tiny, tiny branches. It's also got a couple of its own little roots. And I don't think it's going to make a, for a great feature on a tree in, a long, in the long run. So I may just take it off and see if I can plant that separately. In fact, that's actually the first thing that I'm going to do. So I'll give you a little more of a spin of it, see it from all the angles. It's got a lot of really interesting character because it's been through a lot. Like I said, it was through a cyclone fence and torn apart part and chopped back and tried to regrow several times um, and uh, um, I, I knew eventually it was going to be all torn out um, they moved the cyclone fencing back away from the sidewalk a few days ago 
and started working on um, uh, it, it, it looked like it was eminent for doing landscaping work and so I went out there and, and got got these tree pieces out uh, these are the best ones I could find um, and uh, I was 100% correct the next day they went and chopped all of that uh, all that stuff over just flat topped it all uh, and there is nothing left. So uh, I think I have saved this this tree, and it's going to be really interesting and characterful. Um, I think this is this is going to be a really really cool one to have in my collection uh, when all is all is said and done. Um, yeah. So uh, like I said, first things first. I'm just going to go ahead and take off this branch right down here, and there we go. Oops myself just didn't get all the way through let's try that again third time's the charm there we go so there we go there's this little one right there and i can plant that and that will come up as its own separate cool little tree i think with a nice little twist in it it's got a crazy hairpin and that is kind of what you're looking for in in, in they call it Yamadori. It's just wild collected trees. That's actually really cool. So I will put that in some water uh, in a moment. Uh, okay, so the next thing is really just kind of figuring out how to get it into this pot. Uh, so it is a little bit too big. Some of these brand, uh, uh, roots are obviously way too long. This one here is obviously sticking out way too far. So I'm going to cut it way back to, I think, here. Uh, this one as well. I'm not sure this one's even really, really alive. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's got some roots back here. I can cut it back too. There's a couple of, a couple of little roots growing out right around there. That's good. And again, the cool thing about elms is that these do grow from the roots. You can actually grow whole trees just from, from root cuttings. Um, so I may just stick them all in some dirt and see what happens. Um... And then this one, which has uh, been pretty, pretty badly mutilated. There we go. Um, I'm actually just going to cut it all the way back to there. Here we go. Uh, this branch I probably don't really need. I'll take these off. It's already starting to, this is a, a brand new little tiny bud. I don't know if, how well you can see it on here. Let's see if we can get this into the camera. Little tiny bud. That actually formed after I got it out of the ground. So that shows you how how uh, hardy this tree really is. Um, and it's got a bunch of roots growing in kind of weird directions on the bottom. So you can see this one is growing back in and under itself. I don't really want that. Uh, here's growing in kind of a weird weird direction take that out as well just to kind of open it a bit um, this one's kind of gross I'll take that off all right well let's see how it looks that might be all I need to take or I may need to take off a lot more Ooh, that's actually pretty, pretty close already. I need to clean up a couple more edges uh, in order to get it at least in the pot. Again, this is not a not a major styling choice for this one, um, or anything like that. In fact, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove remove this one root altogether. It's pretty badly mutilated anyway. Let's get it out of there. There we go, and we'll cut that one back, and that one back. Oof. And let's see how far down I can get it in there now. pretty well in there now. I can actually just about get it into the pot. So I'm actually going to take and cut this one here 
even further back. Because I actually don't need it all. And again, it's pretty pretty well beaten up, unfortunately. I'm not sure if this, this one's going to make it or not. It's unfortunately pretty well girdled. And it was girdled before I got to it. And I certainly didn't, it didn't help matters any. Let me clean this up a little bit more. But, it doesn't really seem to be causing any problems, so I'm not sure I'm going to go out of my way to get rid of it. I'm actually going to cut these back a little further as well. Yikes. That root is not doing good. It's real mushy. Okay. If it's that mushy, I'm just going to get rid of it. Again, all of this, which that was just part of the process of getting it out. Urgh. Here we go. Oh, there's a lot of native soil in here, too. It's not a bad thing. Is that if there's any like uh, helpful fungi or bacteria in the soil, it will help help it grow back uh, as well. So now it is sitting nearly in the bottom of the pot. That's really good. These roots, I'm not too worried about. I can actually just tuck them in a little bit, and I will probably rotate the tree a bit to get it a little bit more flat. But that's going to be about it. You know, I'm not going to do any pruning or styling on this. I'm just going to see if, at the end of the day, I have a tree. Um, I'm, again, very optimistic. It's got lots of new roots that are trying to grow on it to make up for the old ones. So if I just get it nestled in here far enough down with enough good soil and get it plenty of water, it should recover and be very very interesting looking. So, as always, first step. Just to get a layer of bonsai soil on the bottom of the pot. And again, I'm not going to worry too much about the drainage screens on this because the hole is very small on this. Um, this one's totally, totally fine for what I'm, what I'm doing. I'm not going to worry about a drainage layer or anything like that. So let's see how it sits. And that actually sits just about, just about perfect uh, in there. So again, just tuck my roots down. All my leaves are clear, nothing's obstructed in there. So now we just need to bury it. Not sure if I want that or not, but I'm going to keep it for now. Right now, my philosophy is more roots is more better. So 
Just trying to like tuck them down under there into the soil. And just make sure I'm getting as much soil as I can into all the little hollows and crevices on this thing. It's quite a bit of open space on the on the back of this. And that, oops, looks pretty good. It's nice and stable in the pot. I don't think it's really going anywhere. I think everything on that is going to be totally fine. So next, I'm going to go ahead and pot up this little thing. And I'll be right back with a smaller terracotta pot for that. Okay, so I did a little bit of size checking on this and I found that honestly the terracotta pots that I have are too big. Uh, so I'm gonna go with one of these little seedling pots. Um, it's actually a really perfect fit for it. Um, trying to figure out kind of the, the right planting angle. I think about like that might be, might be good. Uh, I can probably do it as like a little bit of a cascade. Um, gonna do that though I do want to remove these branches from here and here so that they're not really conflicting in any way yeah and then we'll just tuck that down in there Um, well, there you go. Uh, so that's uh, all the work done on the larger of my uh, elms that I have salvaged. Um, I'm going to probably split this into two videos uh, and do a second one for the other uh, elms uh, that, I, that I collected. Um, so I will see you guys in part two. Uh, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, please tell your friends. Uh, hit the like button on this video if you enjoyed it. Um, let me know uh, if you uh, have any questions about anything. I'm always happy to answer, answer questions relating to, uh, to bonsai and horticulture. Uh, and have yourselves a wonderful day.